That is loud. Hey, what's up guys? We are back in the lab today with another random experiment with high voltage electricity. For this experiment today, I'm bringing back my 12,000 volt neon sign transformer, as well as this thing. This is the Jacob's Ladder I built for my Mad Science Minion project, and it allows an arc of electricity to flow upward over and over and over again. Now, if you go back in time and consider the electrical genius of Nikola Tesla, he didn't have access to solid state capacitors and relays like we do today. Instead, he used things like glass, aluminum foil, and salt water to build capacitor banks for his experiments. For this experiment today, I thought it'd be fun to build a simple salt water capacitor bank. And for that, we're just gonna need a glass bottle, like these glass bottles of Coke I picked up from the grocery store, and some aluminum foil. We wanna get started by taking the caps off the top, removing the liquid from inside, and replacing it with water. Salt water, to be exact. After that, we're just gonna use a little bit of aluminum foil or some aluminum tape I got from the hardware store to wrap around the outside, and our capacitor is basically gonna be complete. So let's gather up those materials and get to work. These bottles aren't really the best bottles because they've got an abnormal shape. It would be better to have straight walls, but whatever. So here's what we've just done, guys. These bottles didn't actually have any labels on them, so there are no labels to remove. So we just took a simple piece of aluminum foil, wrapped it around, and then crushed it down so that it molded to the shape of the glass. Now, the smoother you can get the aluminum, the better this is gonna work, but I think these are gonna serve our purpose very well. Then I took another sheet of aluminum and I folded it over into strands to form these makeshift aluminum wires. They're gonna go right down into the center of these bottles. They look like a nice little metallic soda ready to go. So all we have to do now is put the liquid inside and for that we're using water with a little bit of salt. Now to mix up our salt water concoction I just filled up this little glass dish with some water and picked up some of this real sea salt. Uh, we could use the sea salt from a previous experiment if we wanted to. All we're going to do is take some of this, we're going to dump it into the water, we're going to mix it around for a couple of minutes until as much of that salt has been able to absorb into the water as possible. Then we're just going to pour it into our bottles until it comes up and relatively matches the top line of the aluminum foil here. That should be plenty. Now just for fun, I took all these glass bottles and turned them all into capacitors as well, and they all look exactly the same, except for this one, the foil's a little bit lower, but that's not gonna make that big of a difference. This is a basic capacitor because on the inside, the salt water itself acts as a capacitive plate. The glass is the dielectric, and on the outside, the aluminum foil acts as the other plate to help build up that electric charge. Now, capacitors have so many wide range of uses in electronics, I'm not gonna get into the theories about why capacitors are important. Instead, I wanna show you what kind of a difference these simple little devices make when we hook them up to our Jacob's Ladder. So let's talk about the Jacob's Ladder for just a second. When we take our two high voltage electrodes and connect them to the terminals, the electricity will arc at the path of least resistance, which is right down here at the bottom where the two points are closest. Now, as that arc heats up the air around it, the arc will naturally want to travel upward. And as it does, the electricity will continue to flow through it because that arc is the path of least resistance until it gets high enough that it's stretched out so far it snaps, at which point it starts again at the bottom and repeats that process over and over again. Now just for fun, let's go ahead and hook up our little salt water capacitor in parallel with the system and see what kind of a difference it makes to that arc. So here's the quick setup I've got for a parallel circuit. We still got our high voltage electrode running to this one terminal, but now you can see an alligator clip joins it and runs through this wire connecting to the wire that goes down inside the bottle. Now on the other side, we have a second alligator clip that's not connected to anything, the high voltage wire that's not connected to anything, and we have the outside of the bottle that's covered in aluminum foil. The idea is that if I connect these together, we'll see the same reaction we did before. But the second we touch them to the outside of the bottle, that reaction should change just a little. We have our high voltage line. Connect them together. And we have the same reaction we saw before. That's great. If we connect it to the outside of the bottle here, we get some cool Corona. That looks pretty sweet by itself, but nothing happens with the Jacob's Ladder until we make contact with the other alligator clip as well. Watch this. That's a little bit of a different reaction, isn't it? We go from this beautiful arc that travels upward to a very, very sharp arc that stays down near the bottom. And that smell we're smelling right now is ozone. We are literally generating ozone right now, which is actually poisonous, but not in small concentrations, so we're good.
The other thing you might notice about this is it's incredibly loud. In fact, this reaction is so loud, it might be a good idea to use earplugs because my ears are ringing. This is literally like mini lightning bolts shooting off on our workbench here. And it's not only happening on the Jacob's Ladder, but you can see when I get close to the bottle itself, we can shoot bolts of lightning between the electrodes and the aluminum foil on the outside. It's amazing to think just a little bit of salt water, a little bit of aluminum foil, and a Coke bottle can have such a dramatic difference. But what happens if we take it to the next level and connect all the bottles together? That's coming up next. <laughs> we've done it guys, we've taken our six Coke bottles, we've lined them up in parallel so all six bottles are connected on the outside and the interiors as well. Alright guys, I've just hooked my system up in parallel, let me show you how I've rigged it. I've got two alligator clips with the high voltage terminals going into them, so when we turn on the system we should see the Jacob's Ladder perform as normal. One alligator clips runs to the top which is already in place, the second one is waiting to be touched to the side. So as the system is running, we'll be able to touch this in real time with one hand behind my back and see exactly what difference it makes. Here we go. So you can see the Jacob's Ladder is performing as normal. Now when I touch this to our capacitor bank, it's gonna energize the capacitor, and we'll see what difference that makes. Here we go. That is loud. And you can see I can actually touch any of the bottles and it has the same effect. No matter how high that arc is, the second I touch the bottle, it jumps back to the bottom. And that's because there's so much power that the air current can't lift it. It's driving straight through the point of least resistance there. Now the reason I have one hand behind my back is because if I accidentally touch this, there is enough electric potential, it could stop my heart. We're jumping up into higher voltage and higher amperage, and that is a dangerous combination. If I hold this at a constant distance, you can see it takes a second for the charge to build up, but then it will start sparking when that charge is high enough to jump the gap. That's actually very similar to how lightning works. You've got the clouds and you've got the ground that act as these capacitive plates. You've got the air in the middle that's the dielectric, and when the breakdown is enough, you have a bolt of lightning that connects the two and equalizes the charges. So very dangerous stuff to be playing with, but you can see it's very mesmerizing. And now my whole workshop smells like ozone, which is the smell you smell after a thunderstorm, after all the lightning strikes. So there you have it guys, very cool experiment you can do with some glass bottles and some aluminum foil to build yourself a simple electrical capacitor. They're not very practical this day and age, but they are the kind of technology that was used by Tesla. Thanks for joining us for this mad science experiment today. We'll be looking for you in the next video. Talk to you then. This is the Jacob's Ladder I built for my this is the Jacob's Ladder I built for my mad, <laughs> This is the Jacob's Ladder I built for my Mad Science Minion project and it allows an arc of electricity to flow upward over and over and over again. <laughs> hey guys, I want to jump back in for just a second to invite you to come follow me on Instagram. I've got a very active page where I post daily pictures and stories of behind the scenes and every day is an adventure. Just take 5 seconds right now to click the link in the description to come follow me on Instagram at the King of Random. And I'll see you there.